Today we're going to discuss art, prints, painting, and in between, how to differentiate between art mediums and how to correctly list art. So to start out with, we're gonna talk about the different mediums that we've come across. There are tempura, oil paints, acrylic paints, watercolors, charcoal, pastels, chalk, graphite pencils, color pencils, ink and pen drawings, and art prints. We're gonna talk about art prints first because that's what we come across most frequently. So there are a few different types of art prints. We have etchings, which include intaglio and relief printing, lithography, gislay, that's my best attempt at that, stereography, which is screen printing, and monotype printing, which we don't come across very frequently. So first we're gonna talk about intaglio printmaking and the difference between that and relief printmaking. So an intaglio print is one where the image is printed from a recessed design incised or etched into the surface of a plate. In this type of print, the ink lies below the surface of the plate and is transferred to the paper under pressure using an intaglio press. This is a very heavy press with a flat metal bed suspended between two rollers. Blankets are used to soften and spread the pressure and to help push the dampened paper into the deeper areas of the upturned plate. Examples of intaglio printmaking are etchings, mesopoint, aquatint, engraving, dry point, and collagraph. To contrast that, we have relief printing. A relief print is one where the image is printed from a design raised on the surface of a block. The plate is made by cutting away those areas of the block which you do not want to appear in the design of the rolling of the ink onto the top surface. In this type of print, the ink lies on top of the block and is transferred to the paper under light pressure. Most popular examples of this style of printmaking are woodcut and lino cut, but collagraphs can also be printed with as relief plates. Relief printing presses typically have a bed on which the block is placed face up, a dry sheet of paper placed on top, and an upper surface is brought down to the press to press the paper onto the block. So etchings, to continue the discussion about intaglio and relief, etchings are known for achieving extremely nuanced contrast, generally using black and white as their palette. The printing and use of etchings as an artistic medium began in the Middle Ages with the invention and widespread use of the printing press to print the, the written word. Artists began using this technique to mass produce their works. This method of producing works of art in mass allowed artists to make their works more widely available to far wider, to far wider audiences. This mass production made art much more affordable to less affluent audiences who could then purchase art to hang in their homes. This advent in printmaking made these artists and their works recognizable to audiences worldwide and across time. Artists like Rembrandt and Albert Durer produced some of the most well-known art of art prints still highly praised for their artistic beauty to this day. So this print here is a Durer print. It's one of my favorites. It's a beautiful pheasant wing. So lithography is our next topic or the next type of print. Lithography allows the artist to paint and draw directly onto the surface of a stone or metal plate. The image is created with the greasy materials on a grease sensitive surface to accept ink and the remainder treated with a water-based material to repel ink. A characteristic of the resultant image is often crayon-like texture or ink line and wash drawing. The lithographic printing process is offset and requires a long bed on which the paper and plate are positioned side by side. A full width roller passes along the entire length of the bed, picks up the ink from the plate and presses it back down back again, putting the ink down on the paper. Here's an example uh, by Toulouse-Lautrec. This is called René Jouy. This is a poster that he made for uh, a show that was in Paris. These were, became really popular um, in the early 1900s, or I'm sorry, early 1900s, late 1800s when, the, when this printing process became uh, more popular. And here is a pop art example by Andy Warhol for Maryland's from 1989. This was posthumously produced. And we have the Gisley printing. And this is an excellent example just in general for you guys to know. These are pixels on the left. This is what your average mass produced print is gonna look like. If you don't see the, the pixels, then we know we have something of higher quality like a lithograph or, or a display print. So 
So Gusley Printmaking came into existence with computer technologies becoming more readily available to artists. Graham Nash of the rock band Crosby, Stills & Nash and Young was one of the first to successfully utilize computer printers for his printing business. However, in 1991, one of Nash's employees, artist Jack Dun Dungan, coined the term Gisle to distance more, his more artistic printing method from Nash's more business-like printing model. The word itself derives from the French word for nozzle, Gisle, and today refers to any print made using archival inks, arch archival paper, and color quality control. Gisle prints are often an inexpensive alternative for digital artists who wish to make reproductions of their original two-dimensional artwork while preserving the original rendering for themselves. Then we have stereography or screen print making. Stereography is a process where a flat implement, usually a squeegee, is used to force ink through a stencil and directly onto the paper underneath. The most popular form of this style of printmaking is called screen printing, where a mesh screen is stretched over a frame, areas are blocked, and a squeegee pulled across the mesh prints the image around the blocked areas. Screen printing is a popular form of commercial art such as printing on fabric and large poster cell images and does not require any type of press. And finally, we have monotype prints. <clears throat> monotype is a unique image taken from a matrix rather than drawn or print painted directly on the paper. The image is printed, I'm sorry, painted or rolled onto the smooth surface of a plate, which is usually made of plastic. It is usually printed using an intaglio press. Because the detail of the image is removed by the process of printing the plate, the print cannot be repeated. Let's see. So now we're going to talk about paintings, watercolor oils and acrylics. Watercolor painting is a painting method in which the paints are made of pigment suspended in a water-based solution. Watercolor refers to both the medium and the resulting artwork. The traditional and most common material on to which the paint is applied for watercolor painting is watercolor paper. Oil painting is the process of painting with pigments of, in, of, of a medium of drying oil as the binder. <clears throat> Excuse me. It has been the most common technique for artistic painting on wood panel or canvas for several centuries spreading from Europe to the rest of the world. The advantages of oil painting images include greater flexibility, richer and denser color, and a wide range from light to dark. But the process is slower, especially when one layer of paint needs to be allowed to dry before another is applied. Finally, we have acrylic paint, and it's a fast-drying paint made of pigment suspended in acrylic polymer emulsion and plasticizers, silicone oils, defumers, stabilizers, or metal soaps. Most acrylic paints are water-based but become water-resistant when dry. Depending on how, uh, how the paint is diluted with water or modified with acrylic gels, mediums, or pasters, or paste, sorry, the finished acrylic painting can resemble a watercolor, a gouache, or an oil painting, or have its own unique characteristics not attainable with other media. So how to differentiate between the paint mediums. Watercolor paintings will have a translucent appearance with overlapping border lines of color, often with pencil or ink visible beneath. Watercolors are rarely opaque unless other mediums have been added. Acrylics and oils can be more difficult to differentiate between Oils have a softer, less, less defined edges due to the paint's slow drying time and the oils that make up its composition. Conversely, acrylics will have sharper edges and will have a plastic-like appearance. Acrylics will also tend to have more vibrant colors, while oils can be darker and murky in appearance. Texture is another telltale clue as to whether a painting is in acrylics or oils. On the surface, acrylic paint will look rougher as you look at it, as you look it over, partially because of how the paint medium dries and because it usually applies much thicker than oil paints. Dates can also be a dead giveaway as to medium. If the painting was made before 1950, it's more than likely an oil painting as acrylic was not heavily introduced into the art world until post-1950. Crackalore and yellowing can also be a clue when determining oil versus acrylic. Oil paints will yellow and crack with age. This crackling is called crackalore in the art world. Here's an example of Crackalore. This is Johannes Vermeer, Girl with an Earring from 1665. And honestly guys, that can be replicated. It can be. Pretty, pretty well. So just because you see it, that doesn't mean necessarily it's pretty 50s. So when we list a piece of art, an academic listing, which you guys won't necessarily need to know, but you list the artist's name, the title of the work, the date, the medium, measurements, and the location of the artwork where it's currently on display. Here's an example for you. 
So lead lines for an auction listing, for our purposes, we wanna do the date if known, signed if it is, artist name and medium. And then you wanna put all of your other information for the piece in the description. So the title of the piece, um, any other information about the artist that you know, um, obviously the medium, that's going to be included in the, the lead line, but those are the most important things for listing a piece of artwork. So hit that even more. What's, what needs to be in the lead line? Let's, let's talk about Let that. That's back. one of the most important things okay. that, that you guys can, can learn from this right now. So lead line needs to be date, whether or not it's signed, because that's important, artist name, and the medium. So whether it's an oil on canvas, a print, a lithograph, if you know specifically what type of print it is, if it's a glisse. And then obviously if it's numbered, that's another important thing. If you can fit that in the lead line, you can put date signed and numbered. So for example, I have 1985 signed Andy Warhol for Maryland's lithograph print would be a proper title for, um, for that particular item. Remember, we only get 50 characters. Right. That's, yeah, so any of the other details. You may have to go litho instead of lithograph. Correct, yeah. Um, print, or you might just have to go with print also, and then you could just put all that other information into your description, so everything else that, that your buyer needs to know. Um, you know, the measurements, like I said, where it might be currently. If, if it was a piece that um, had some strong provenance on it, that needs to go in there as well. Uh, ownership history. Uh, where it's been, that's all really important for the buyers to know.